as we continue with the skin, here's some food for thought. God created our skin tones with beautiful variety, but all of our souls are the same. So the global variations in skin color, individuals living in the tropics with intense sunlight have developed darkly pigmented skin. Those in temperature regions are moderately pigmented and can tan and living near the poles results in very light skinned individuals who burn easily. So light skin, medium skin, darker skin. So that's it. That's, that's skin color. Well, let's look at the biology of skin color here. But there's different, uh, we use the Fitzpatrick skin type cell. And um, basically you've got ivory, beige, light brown, medium brown, dark brown, and very dark brown. No one really has black skin. So when people use the word black, nobody has black skin. It's ivory, beige, light brown, medium brown, dark brown, and very dark brown. That's it. So characteristics, pale skin, light or red hair, prone to freckles, burns very easily, and rarely tans easily and you rarely get a tan. It's hard to get a tan because you're just going to burn. Uh, sun protection at the greatest risk of developing skin cancer. So if you have ivory, redhead, and freckles. If you have beige skin, fair skin, like to have light hair, blue or brown eyes. Some have dark hair, but still have fair skin. Usually burn, gradually tan. Again, their greatest risk of developing skin cancer, so needs to protect the skin. If you have light brown skin, uh, light olive skin with dark hair and brown or green eyes, Burns with long exposure to the sun, but generally tans quite easily. Uh, should protect themselves in strong sunshine. If you have medium brown skin, um, brown eyes, and dark hair, burns with very lengthy exposure, but always tans easily. Should protect themselves in strong sunshine. If you're dark brown, naturally brown skin, brown eyes, and dark hair, burns only with ex excessive exposure to the sun. Skin easily darkens further. Uh, sun protection, protect themselves when outdoors in the sun for too long. And if you have very dark uh, brown, black skin with dark brown eyes and black uh, hair, burns only with extreme exposure to the sun. Skin very easily darkens further and protect themselves when outdoors in the sun for a long time. So then you see you have this scale right here. The excessive skin exposure. You remember, your body's always trying to find homeostatic uh, balance. So when you go into imbalance, that's excessive skin exposure, damage the skin, causing clumping of the elastin fibers, that nasty leathery skin, depressing the immune system, and can alter the DNA of skin cells. Therefore, you get skin cancer and a melanoma. A tan is lost when the melanin-containing keratinocytes are shed from the stratum corneum. So all that tan that you worked on during the summer months goes away. But let's not get like this lady here. This, this is a little, don't ever bathe yourself with um, baby oil either. Look at this, this is a little excessive. The ultraviolet band of sunlight, specifically UVA, UVA and UVB can cause skin damage. UVA penetrates deeper into the skin than UVB, destroying the collagen. Degrading collagen causes skin to lose elasticity and smoothness, leading to wrinkles, visible signs of aging. UVB is the source of sunburn. UVA is aging. UVB is burning. So A for aging, B for burning. DNA absorbs UVA and UVB, causing mutations that causes melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancers. Use sunscreen and wear sunglasses that protect from UVA and UVB. Uh, SPF 50 gives you about five hours of protection. And, you know, some skin damage may not be visible to the naked eye. Under specialized light, clumpy hemoglobin and melanin due to sun exposure are visible. So here she looks great, but under that, this is the skin damage that's occurred already. You can go to your dermatologist and they can run this scan for you. Don't use the filters on uh, TikTok. That's not good enough, okay? <laughs> Sun damage, aging, photo damage skin. Stratum corneum is thick and dehydrated. Skin cells are misshapen and disorganized. Excess melanin causes uneven pigmentation and collagen and elastin fibers are weak and damaged. That's aging. Young, healthy skin. Stratum corneum is thin and hydrated. New skin cells are healthy and full. Corrected pigment cells distribute melanin evenly and supportive skin structure is strong and resilient. 
That's the difference between young and age, older age. Uh, if you have freckles and moles, if you look at this, a lot of us have freckles and moles. These are normal, that's normal, that's normal, that's normal. What we don't like is when these freckles and moles start to change color, start to, start to change shape, they grow. So if you had this mole that's looked the same for 15 years, don't worry about it. But if it starts to look like this, when it has asymmetry, border irregularity, the color changes, and the diameter is more than a fourth of an inch or six millimeter, which is greater than the size of the eraser on your pencil, then we need to start worrying. But here, very symmetrical, same color. Some of you have moles and freckles. Don't worry about those. Freckles and moles are local accumulations of melanin. Melanocytes stimulated when exposed to sunlight. Melanin buildup helps protect the DNA of skin cells from UV hydration. Where you have to be careful is on your back because you can't really look at that. So I've actually found a lot of uh, skin cancer on patients' backs because they can't, they can't see it back there. So then we'll refer them to the dermatologist and they'll be like, oh yeah, um, got to take a look at that. So now we go into hair. Hair follicles originate in the epidermis and have many different parts. Ah. <laughs> hair is produced by the hair bulb, consists of hard, keratinized epithelial cells. Melanocytes provide pigment for hair color. Regions of the hair, you have the shaft, which is the portion of complete keratinization, extends halfway down the portion embedded in the skin. The root is the keratinized, still ongoing remainder of the hair deep within the follicle. So here's the hair bulb. That's where it originates okay, in the dermis. And then you have the hair shaft is outside here. Here's the hair follicle. Dermal and epidural sheet surround the hair root. You have the erector pili muscle. That's what gives you goosebumps. Smooth muscle when you get freaked out. And then you have sebaceous gland, which are white head versus black heads. Okay. And then you have a sweat gland. Here's the hair follicle. The slide shows a cross section of a hair follicle. Basal cells of the hair matrix in the center differentiate into cells of the inner root sheet. Types of hair. Villous hair is the body hair of females and children that's pale and fine. Terminal hair is usually coarser, longer, maybe darker. That's found in your eyebrows, your scalp. Puberty appear in your armpit and pubic regions of both sexes. So that's the difference between vellus hair and terminal hair. On the face, chest, arms, and legs of males, that's terminal hair. It's coarser, darker. Grows in response to androgens, testosterone. Now, homeostatic imbalance. Remember, you're always trying to find imbalance. In women who are over hairy, they may have an adrenal gland or ovarian tumor that secretes too many androgens. Also, ladies, if you're too skinny, right? Remember, if you don't have enough body fat, we talked about body fat percentage. If you're under 10%, your body will actually grow more hair to insulate you. So we find that someone that's really skinny, they'll actually be excessively hairy because they're trying to get insulation from the hair as well. So that's a side effect of being too skinny. Hair growth is two millimeters per week. Lifespan of hairs. Scalp, four years average. You lose about 90 hairs per day. Eyebrows, uh, three to four months, shorter, okay? Ah, alopecia, going bald. Homeostatic imbalance, the hair thinning can be induced by high fever, surgery, severe emotional trauma, excessive vitamin A, stress, antidepressants, chemotherapy drugs, protein deficiency, and lactation. So when you breastfeed, sometimes you lose hair. Hair can regrow, maybe related to male pattern baldness. Alopecia totalis and areta are variations of male pattern baldness. Um, 
laser hair removal. Some of you find a Groupon and you're like, oh, this is a good deal. Let me show you laser hair removal. Sure. Basically, the hair is trimmed and a cooling gel applied to the area to be treated. In a fraction of the second, pulse red light heats up the hair. The hair becomes detached from its follicle and eventually falls out. So it lasts for a while. The hair follicle is left unable to produce new hair. So there's laser hair removal. Works good. Find that Groupon. Hair transplants, LeBron James. Yes, LeBron. He's done many transplants. Surgical technique that moves individual hair follicles or groups of hair follicles from a donor site, usually the back of the head, to a recipient site. Treats male pattern baldness. Follicles can be harvested in rows of scalp or as individual follicles. So Brandon Fazer, remember the mummy? And LeBron James, yep. He's had many hair transplants. Right now, during the the run, the Laker run, he's you can see that he hasn't had any transplants lately. So but he went he went bald very early. Ooh, nails. Now we go from hair to nails. Modifications of the epidermis. So their extensions of the epidermis corresponds to hoofs or claws of other animals. So you remember uh, the rhinoceros horns? You know those rhinoceros horns that uh, unfortunately they, they've been killing the rhinoceros just for their horns? All it is is just modification of the epidermis. So they're killing these animals unfortunately just for keratin. Hard keratin. That's it. <laughs> Clear hard derivative of the stratum corneum. The growth rate is about one millimeter per week. Uh, new cells added by mitosis in the nail matrix. The growth zone of proximal edge of the nail. Lack of pigment makes them colorless. But you like to go get your nails done. Oh yes, look at these guys. How do they wipe their you know what? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Some people are just absolutely ridiculous. Right. Nail structures, that's the free edge, okay, the body of the nail, the root of the nail. Epenchinum is the proximal nail fold that protects into the nail body. Some of you have ripped your nails out. Uh, some of you like to chew on your nails. Stephen Curry has a bad habit of chewing his nails. Uh, it's nasty because underneath the nails harbors a lot of bacteria. It's disgusting. Oof. Ingrown hill, uh, nails. Some of you have that. Nail grows so that it cuts into one or both sides of the nail bed. Starts as a microbial inflammation as the parenchyma due to downward or sideways pressure on the toe. Only found in shoe wearing cultures. And they're usually treated with antibiotics but may require surgery. Ooh, that looks... Cut your nails. Man. <laughs> that looks gross. All right. The nail is the accessory structure of the integumentary system. Again, we talked about moles. Moles range from benign accumulations of melanocytes to melanomas. Skin cancer induced by UV rays, both natural and tanning beds. The elderly and fair skinned are the most common. So there's three types of skin cancers. There's the basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and the malignant melanoma. So the most common is called the basal cell carcinoma. It's the least dangerous. It hardly metastasizes. It rises in the stratum basale and invades the dermis. The next is squamous cell carcinoma. Arises from the keratinocytes of the stratum spinosum, can metastasize to lymph nodes and can be very lethal. The worst is the melanoma, most deadly, but only 5% of cases, so it's not that common to have melanoma. Arises from the melanocytes of the existing mole, metastasizes quickly and often fatal if not treated quickly. Squamous cell carcinoma presents here as a lesion in the individual's nose. Remember the A, B, C, D, E of skin cancer detection? If you find any asymmetry, if the border is irregular, if the color is as brown on one side, red on another side, 
if the diameter is more than six millimeters or a fourth of an inch and is it evolving here's the new before it just used to be a b c d now they added the e is it evolving was it this size and then all of a sudden is it this size in six months is it changing size that's the key right there you've heard of vitiligo uh, my dad actually had vitiligo uh, individuals with vitiligo experience depigmentation that results in lighter colored patches of skin uh, nothing uh, to worry about this doesn't affect your uh, uh, health uh, at all uh, it's just that uh, unfortunately you know your immune system again is a haywire and it actually um, experienced depigmentation so eccrine glands uh, that's uh, eccrine glands are coral glands in the dermis that release sweat okay so these are sweat glands aka eccrine glands aging um, generally skin especially on the face and hands starts to display the first notable signs of aging as it loses its elasticity over time you've seen that uh, uh, TikTok or that um, Facebook uh, meme where this uh, gentleman is uh, dating someone that's Asian and they said five years from now so the Asian girl does it she looks the exact same five ten years and the guy that's he uh, she's dating he's like constantly aging aging so um, Asians are blessed because they do have that that nice collagen and elastin and they they have a very slow aging process so good job uh, eczema eczema is a common skin disorder that presents as red flaky skin okay. acne uh, I'm sure some you've uh, um, experienced acne in your lifetime especially during puberty Acne is a result of overproductive sebaceous glands, which leads to formation of blackheads and inflammation of the skin. Uh, next year, the FDA has approved a, a very new uh, acne medicine that is uh, controls the hormone levels in your skin. So usually, I mean, acne is breakout due to uh, imbalance in hormone levels. This is why I was telling you that sometimes women that have uh, severe acne, they'll be put on orthotricycline, which is birth control, because it gives you a steady state of uh, estrogen and progesterone. But this new topical treatment that's been approved by the uh, FDA is uh, will control your hormone levels on the skin level with less side effects. So look for that in the months to come. Now burns, burns are very uh, serious. When you go into healthcare, you're going to have to deal with burns. And we use the uh, calculating system. It's called the rule of nines. So if you look at the head, that's 9% of your body. Your trunk is 36% of your body. Your genitalia is 1%. Your lower limbs are 18%. And your upper limbs are 9% each. So that's how you calculate burns in your body so let's do a little math uh, problem here so let's say a patient comes in with burns to the entire right upper extremity burns to the entire left lower extremity and burns to the posterior aspect of the head and neck so what percent is burned so go ahead and calculate that again burns entire right upper extremity entire left upper extremity and burn only to the posterior side of the head and neck so tell me what percent the patient has burns that's a good quiz question burns unfortunately are the leading cause of accidental death death primarily from fluid loss infection and toxic effects of eschar which is dead tissue uh, the difference in burns you have first degree burns which are partial thickness burns that where the only the epidermis uh, painful uh, redness slight edema sunburn usually localized you can put ice on first degree burns because it is painful second degree burns a uh, partial thickness burn uh, the epidermis and part of the dermis uh, comes off it can be red tan or white uh, very very painful blisters occur because it gets a separation of the epidermis and the dermis uh, may damage hair, nerve follicles, nerve endings, uh, severe sunburns, and scalds. So that's what a secondary burn looks like. Third degree burns. Epidermis and dermis are completely destroyed. 
Uh, you can get contractures. Now here's a good question. Do you think a third degree burn is painful? And so there is the breakdown again of the burns. So four and a half percent in the front, four and a half in the back, total nine percent, anterior and posterior upper limbs, 18 percent, the trunk, 36 percent, and the lower extremities, nine percent and nine percent. So you get a total of 100 percent here. Very good. Hopefully you learned a lot on the skin. There's a lot of information there. All right, some fun facts to end with. Fingernails grow nearly four times faster than toenails. If you notice that you're trimming your fingernails much more frequently than your toenails, you're not just imagining it. The lifespan of human hair is three to seven years on average. And you must lose over 50% of your scalp hairs before it's apparent to anyone. And as you know, human hair is virtually indestructible. Aside from its inflammability, human hair decays at a slow rate and is practically non disintegrated So it's impossible to get rid of. If you ever wondered how your clogs your pipe so quick, consider this. Hair cannot be destroyed by cold, change of climate, water, or other natural forces and is resistant to many kinds of acids and corrosive chemicals. So that... Uh, liquid draino that you dump in there really it doesn't really do anything to the hair it just pushes it down further in the pipe okay there you go the end